Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are going to be taking a look at some mods, tools, and add-ons that are currently functioning and tested in Sim Update 5. So stick around because hopefully you guys find something that's useful for you. If you are interested in learning how to fly the A320, consider checking out my Overkill's A320 guide. This guide is available on either my Patreon site or via PayPal donation. PayPal donation, $10 or more, just be sure to specify which guide you're looking for as I have more than one. Patreon site, tier two or above, again, $10 a month, but that gives you access to all the guides that I currently have available and then all that are coming in the future. My A320 guide walks you through how to install the A32NX mod by Fly-By-Wire. For those who don't know, the A32NX mod takes the default uh, A320 Microsoft Flight Simulator and brings its function uh, functionality and features up to what I would consider study level simulation, and it's all completely free. Um, so be sure to check that out. Uh, this guide walks you through everything from creating your flight plan into SimBrief, reading your flight plan in SimBrief, entering your flight plan in Microsoft Flight Simulator if that's how you choose to do so in the main menu or in the main map, um, full cockpit tours, walking through every button switch, etc., letting you know guys know where all the different panels and what the different options are different displays on the screen and icons and things that you may experience while in flight and what they mean and how to read them and, and interpolate the information being displayed. The preliminary checklist before startup, starting up the aircraft, taxi, takeoff, navigation, your altitude management, features of the MCDU that are related specifically to the A320 but are available because of fly-by-wire and their efforts, um, how to break down a flight route, understanding what you're looking at so you can take this information, use it in future flights. Um, rather than just copying and pasting information that you're seeing on a screen or on a document. Um, how to acquire some more um, information that's provided in the A320, specifically, specifically the A32NX. Um, the different gauges, again, understanding what you're looking at versus just you know powering up and going, uh, getting some of that background information to solidify your flight. Looking at approach plates, departure plates, SIDs, STARS, all those things that we have to consider when doing an IFR flight, um, managing your descent, when to um, start your descent, um, as well as the approach and giving you goals of where you want to be at specific points and even the missed approach. For shutdown, we go through the startup or, or the uh, cold and dark and the turnaround status. So again, if you guys are interested in a guy like this and interested in learning how to fly the uh, uh, A320, consider donating or subscribing to Patreon to acquire your guide. All right, so getting right on to our list here. The first one up today is the Salty's 4.0747 mod. This is an incredible aircraft that offers some very, very great detail into the FMS and flight management system as well as autopilot refinements. This aircraft in the default version of the simulator is virtually almost non-flyable when you think about it. Um, a lot of the goofy behavior that happens and Salty's uh, mod really cleans this aircraft up a lot while adding some incredible features that aren't there by default. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. If you're ever interested in flying the queen of the skies, this is definitely the one to take. Again, that's Salty's 747 mod link down in the description below. This is a turn into a fantastic aircraft. Next on our list is one that I was super excited to post a full video on last night, but I'll mention it again here today, is the Mix Mugs TBM 930 Improvement Mod. This mod is absolutely fantastic. It adds all the doors and features as well as the passenger door over here can be opened as well. Gives you autopilot access or uh, co-pilot access as well as the ability to remove them. You can close the doors, we can lock the doors. And then the biggest thing that I am happy about is having the improvement to the performance numbers. Your speed performance um, on takeoff and landings, approach speeds, things like that, um, in the default version of the TBM 930 are nowhere close to realistic specifications where, um, according to the Real World Pilots Operational Handbook, this aircraft actually nails it. Um, we get our 95 knots on rotation speed. We get our 85 knots approach speed, um, as well as the best rate and best angle, uh, best climb speed. So this is absolutely fantastic. One thing I will show everyone real quick, this is a question that continues to come up, is how to use the mouse to bring the throttle from cutoff over into the flight idle position. So I'm gonna show you guys that real quick. So you're gonna take your left mouse click here, hold it, move it forward. Okay, there's low idle, there's high idle. And then to bring it on over to the, uh, up over the gate into the flight position, 
Um, now, someone said you could right click it, but I think it depends on what you have your mouse set to. So mine, most like most of yours, uh, who have the default control, right click controls the camera pan. Okay, but what you can do is you're going to hold left click and tap the right click while holding left. So notice the cursor goes away when you hold down the mouse key. So there's left click, holding it, now tapping the right click. And you can go back and forth. Okay, so it's the same way to bring it from one gate to the other, regardless of which way you're going. And then once you get to the side you want, pull the throttle into the position that you want to pull it into. All right, so I did want to show everyone that real quick. That's a question that continues to come up quite a bit. So I wanted to make sure to demonstrate that to you guys today. But again, if you guys have not checked this out, the TBM 930 is probably one of my, well, there's no ends of a bat. It is my favorite aircraft in the simulator to fly, um, which was very interesting as I came from X-Plane 11 flying things like the Zebo and then P3D, P3D flying the, uh, you know, again, the Queen of the Skies and the uh, 737 for P3D as well. Um, and then when I moved over to Microsoft Flight Simulator, I decided to give the TBM a shot, and it is by far my favorite aircraft to fly, um, as long as you have the working titles G3000 installed with it. Um, I will touch on that for a second. Another thing that people keep having um, questions about is a black screen on the MFD. Guys, I'm not having any of those problems, so I wish I could help you on that. I don't even be can't even begin to know what would be causing that. Um, we'll walk through a very quick and ugly startup real fast so I can show you guys, hopefully address some issues here. Maybe I'll see something that I haven't seen before. So let's see here. With battery power on, we should have our Garmin. Yeah, it, it functions just fine for me. Um, Let's go ahead and clink the starter. Oops, I totally did that wrong. The very boost pump on ignition should be on. Did I even catch it? I did catch it. We have ECAS messages and warnings coming up over here. Should be at 13%. There's low idle. High idle. And again, this is just real quick, just to show you guys something real fast. And let's bring it up over into idle position. Now something I am experiencing all of a sudden that I was not last night was the parking brake chime is not being removed. So with the parking brake on, you're going to get the chime. So what you can do is just remove the parking brake. The aircraft shouldn't taxi the initial time. I mean, you can see I haven't touched my brakes or anything. Um, and you guys should be fine to go. Ecast message now being repeated. This is a change that looks like in working title. Um, there must have been an update to the G3000. That's probably causing a conflict. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's the only issue that I have found with it is um, that particular section here. But if we come back up top, we should be able to clear all of our other messages. So let's go back to auto, auto, fuel selection on, autopilot trims on, oxygen set, nav lights on, taxi light if you really want to turn it on now. And let's see what else we have. Pressurization bleed, let's set that to auto, and inertial separator will come on. Just showing the messages are clearing, right? And then we should get a caution here in a minute. Yeah, it's interesting that it's not silencing that anymore. Hmm. So that part is new, but again, release the parking brake and you'll be fine. Worst case scenario, hold it down with your pedals for now. But the bulk, I mean, if that's the worst thing that you've got going on with everything that's happened with Sim Update 5, I'd say we're still pretty far ahead of the game. Um, but anyway, so definitely, guys, try this out because like I promise the rest of the aircraft flies absolutely beautiful. That uh, brake, parking brake chime, I mean, that's twice. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure initial separator didn't cause a problem, too. Nope, we're good to go. So, yeah, definitely give her a shot, guys. I promise she won't disappoint you. Very fun aircraft. And uh, let's move on to our next one. Next on our list is the modification for the Cessna Citation Longitude. Again, this is a flight model modification that increases the performance and brings it closer to real-world specifications. Um, I wanted to make sure to point this one out that this one was broken at the time of Sim Update 5, um, but has since been repaired and is active again. 
Um, and I wanted to make sure to really get this one into the video because this is an aircraft that without that modification certainly got a lot of hate um, from the default um, um, layout. Uh, the default flight model, unfortunately, I have to agree, was quite terrible. Um, had a lot of weird performance issues, did a lot of weird bouncing around, and, and the speed, none of the speed settings matched. I mean, it was just, it, it, yeah, it's very similar to the TBM 930 as the speeds were not anywhere close to accurate. Um, but make sure you guys are, if you're flying the Cessna Citation Longitude, if you liked the Longitude, uh, please make sure that you guys grab that um, modification down in the description below as it will greatly enhance your flight experience with this particular aircraft. Again, along with the G working titles G3000. Um, the Longitude has the G5000 suite in it, but the G3000 from working title also affects the G5000 in the found in the Longitude. Um, so make sure that you guys are using both of those with this particular aircraft and I promise she is much Much better to fly and she's a very fun plane to fly once you practice with her a little bit my last flight I made a couple of mistakes with it and she reminds you very quickly um, That uh, you better stay on the handlebars with this aircraft otherwise uh, She'll get you in the end, but either way a lot of fun to fly guys again Make sure you check out that modification link down in the description below and she will be a very fun aircraft for you to fly. Next on our list of functional mods, add-ons, and tools is going to be the Toolbar Pushback by Ambitious Pilot. Um, this is an incredible awesome tool. For those of you who are seeing it for the first time, it adds all of our pushback helper functionalities and all the other third-party apps that we use for pushback and ground services into the Toolbar Direct. Makes it much easier to access it. You can toggle your jetway as I've done here. Um, I don't have any ground vehicle functionality. I don't know what's going on there. I don't have any of my tugs or anything like that. But if I did, I could trigger the catering truck, the baggage carts. Um, it would open all the doors, stores or stairs if you need it, external power. Um, you can control your doors from here as well as the parking brake. What makes it really nice is if you're inside the aircraft, you can come up here. We can go back to aircraft. Let's get rid of that jetway. It does take a second. There it goes. And then if we wanted to, we could go straight into the pushback, start pushback. And from here, we can use the tug speed. Let me release the parking brake. And you can also use your rudder pedals as I'm doing here to actually push the aircraft back. So we can come back out here if you want to. Oh, you do need to hit the C key on your keyboard when in the external view to control your controls. But it does make it very, very handy. You can go forward if you want. You can hold. Again, reverse. Increase the speed. Really get that thing moving if you want. And then end the pushback and set your parking brake when necessary. Very, very handy tool. Very, very nice to have. And it's great that it is, once again, functioning. Um, directly after Sim Update 5, it had a few issues. It was working for the most part, but definitely had some bugs. All right. Let's move on to our next one. Last on our list today of mods, tools, and add-ons that are extremely helpful is going to be the No Handlebar add-on. Uh, since Sim Update 5, the white handlebar that sits up top here now never goes away. It used to only show up when you moused over it um, but uh, or moved your mouse in the external view, but uh, unfortunately now it just stays there. The only time it goes away is if you click off of screen. Um, so the no handlebar tool is an extremely handy add-on or modification, I should say, that actually removes the handlebar completely. You still just move your mouse up to that location and it will bring up the menu as you guys are seeing done here. But very, very nice, especially if you're trying to get those really nice screenshots. Again, link down in the description below. And that is going to do it for today's mods, tools, and add-ons for Sim Update 5. We have another video coming out tomorrow with some more potential uh, fixes and tricks to keep the sim running smoothly there's been a couple things that have come to my attention that we're going to be testing later such as going back to a previous nvidia driver that is solving some of the issues as well as a few others that i have found so stay tuned for that video tomorrow which should help hopefully solve again some more problems for some of you obviously it won't be a quick fix but again the more tips and tricks that we can make to bring the sim back until uh the next update will uh, be obviously as helpful as, as it can be. So anyway, guys, I hope you're all having a really great Monday, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Talk to you soon.